There's definitely something special about being in a place that maybe only a few hundred people have ever been here. The atmosphere, it almost glitters because the air is so dry that any kind of water vapor that you're exhaling kind of turns into little ice crystals in front of you. My name is Michaela King, and I work uh, near the North Pole studying Outlet Glaciers in Greenland. And I'm studying how these big conveyor belts of ice are changing through time. So this is a coloring book page. What I'm holding here is a, a hand auger. And this is actually uh, a tool that we use to drill small, narrow uh, holes into the snow and ice so that we can install tiny sensors deep under the snow layer. So when we're working in the field and using this auger, we start initially with just the smallest uh, first flight or drill bit, which is about a meter or so long, we hook that to the drill, and then we drill our hole. But we want to get as deep as possible, so we're going to keep adding additional drill bits to our existing bit or existing flights so we can get a deeper and deeper hole. And this requires a lot of cooperation, so there's usually three of us working in the field. And we'll drill the first hole and bring it back up, and then somebody, either one or two people, are in charge of then holding the flight that we just stuck down into the ice, holding it, and then we add another on top, and we keep you know, adding additional flights until it becomes too physically challenging to actually pull up on 10 or so flights. So the last thing that we really want to happen is to let go of the drill bit and have it you know, fall down into a hole. That's probably the hardest physical component of the field work is doing that drilling. So the sensor can only measure what's above it. So the deeper that we get the sensor into that snow and slushy ice layer, then we're getting more information about how rapidly the snow and ice is compacting above it. These sensors are measuring changes in uh, temperature as well as how much melt's occurring and actually track features on ice and see how far they move. So I think of the ice sheet almost like pouring pancake batter where you can only pour the pancake so thick until it actually wants to flow out under its own weight. And so your pancake batter will actually expand as you continue to pour. And so the edges where that pancake batter is actually moving really fast, that's like the edges of the ice sheet where we have these glaciers that are draining the thick interior ice. So the Greenland ice sheet is draining 500 gigatons of ice through these outlet glaciers. A gigaton is a billion tons. And so 500 billion tons of ice. And one way that we can tell how fast the ice is flowing is by looking at cracks on the ice surface. So the more cracks that you have on the ice surface, that's evidence that that ice is really moving and breaking really rapidly. So it's important that we understand and study how these large glaciers are changing because these outlet glaciers actually drain ice from the thick interior of the ice sheet and move it to the ocean, where it breaks off as icebergs and contributes to sea level rise. So the faster these glaciers flow, the faster sea levels are rising from ice moving from the ice sheets into the ocean. When you go to the field and can see it with your own eyes and sort of grasp these large-scale processes that are taking place, it's really profound. 